Hello everyone. Today we're going to take a look at another bias scheme for our bipolar transistors, namely a voltage divider bias. This can have very high stability, just like the two supply emitter bias. And essentially what we're going to do is sort of shift that emitter bias up by whatever the negative power supply was. So initially we had something like this, where this point went to a negative power supply. Now what we're going to do instead is run this to ground. So we still have our emitter resistor and collector resistor and collector power supply. Whereas before we had a resistor going back to ground, we're going to bring this base terminal up in an equivalent magnitude of what the old VEE was. And we do that through the use of a voltage divider. And we'll just name these two resistors R1 and R2. So what's going to happen here is this divider will set up a potential, some fraction of VCC, that it sits on the base. We have our drop on the base emitter, and the remainder will fall on the emitter resistor, which will set up the uh, uh, emitter current. And of course, emitter and collector currents are the same, virtually. Okay, now, what we want to do is figure out the voltage at this point, right, the, the base point. So how do we go about doing that? Um, a good way to do that would be to thevenize, right? So we can thevenize looking back this way to see what drives the base. And what we would wind up with is something like this. This is going to be the driving part of the circuit. Here's your VCC. We see the R1, R2 coming to down, down the ground. And this is the point that feeds the base, right? So we're basically looking back in this way. We want to find out what's the Thevenin resistance and what's the Thevenin voltage source. That's fairly straightforward. The Thevenin voltage source, of course, is the open circuit output voltage, which is just a voltage divider between R1 and R2. So this the Thevenin will be a VCC times R2 over R1 plus R2. And the resistor, the Thevenin resistance, right, is what we see looking in here. Replace the uh, voltage source with its uh, ideal internal resistance, which would be a short, so that's just R1 in parallel with R2. Now we take this new circuit and we stick it back on to the original. V7 in, the R7 in, and here is the base of the transistor. Okay, now this we can do a little analysis on because we can isolate this base emitter loop. Right, there's our rise, we have a drop on the Thevenin resistance, we have a drop on the base emitter and a drop on RE. So, using KVL, we would say that the rise V Thevenin would have to equal the drop on the Thevenin resistance, V of RTH, plus the VBE, plus the drop on the emitter resistor, V of RE. And as usual, We'll simplify this up, we'll sort of expand some things and then recollect. Um, but the two resistor voltages we write in terms of Ohm's law. So we can say V7 and minus VBE, since those are two known values. V um, of our Thevenin is simply the current through it, which is the base current, times our Thevenin. And then this is the emitter current times our E. And we can make the approximations that collector current and emitter current are the same, and that base current is basically collector current uh, divided by beta. So if we plug that in here, right, we say that's IC over beta. We say this is just IC. 
and we solve in terms of IC, and what we wind up with is V-thevenin minus VBE divided by RE plus R-thevenin over beta. Now this should look familiar. This is very similar to what we found for our two supply emitter bias. We have V-thevenin instead of VEE, and we have R-thevenin instead of RB. And it's again true that if we can make RE a lot bigger than R-thevenin over beta, beta doesn't make much difference. In other words, we will get high stability. Okay, so practically speaking, with typical betas, if we can make you know, the R2 around the same size or smaller than RE, that's what we're going to wind up with. Now, we would also like to see our uh, load line from this. So, we've got our saturation over here. There's our cutoff. So, the cutoff would be the total power supply. Remember, that's where IC goes to goes to um, zero, so we'd have no drops on these two resistors. So this will just be VCC for cutoff. And then our saturation current, that's where the VCE goes to zero, so we'd have that power supply sitting across the combined collector emitter resistance, right? So IC sat is going to equal VCC over RC plus RE. And then we will have some operation point, right? Some ICQ, VCEQ combo that will lie on there. And if we do this right, we can vary the beta, and this Q point will hardly change at all. So let's do an example. Uh, I'm going to use 12 volts on this a 4K, and a 3.3K. And then back here on the divider, I will use a 12 and 6K. All right. So if we were going to uh, sort of launch right in here the V-thevenin, We have a divider, 6K, 12K, and a 12 volt source. All right, that's a two to one divider. So we're going to wind up with one third of the potential 12 volts times 6K over 6K plus 12K. And that's going to give us four volts. Our R Thevenin is going to be 6K in parallel, 12K. And that's going to give us. 4k ohms. All right, so we just plug numbers into our formula over here, right? Use this formula, see what we get. Take our 4 volts minus VBE, which we expect to be about 7 tenths. Our E is 3.3k. Our THEV is 4k. And, you know, we've been right along, we've been using a typical beta of 100. So I think I'll just continue with that. Not that it's going to make any major difference, as we'll see. But we, cry, we grind this out. And we are going to get a 0 0.988 milliamps out of this. Now we can take that current through the same technique. We can find uh, the voltages across various other components. So, for example, VC, collector to ground. Take your 12 volts, subtract the drop on the collector resistor, which is going to be 4K times the current we just found. All right, again, just Ohm's law. That's all we're doing. KVL, Ohm's law. All right? This works out to a little over 8 volts, 8.05 volts. We can do the same thing for the emitter. Again, assuming collector and emitter currents are the same. Just Ohm's law. Here's the emitter. There's ground. So there's a VE right there. All right. So I'll just take my 3.3K times the associated current. 
and we get 3.26 volts. If I want to find VB, that's easy enough. I know there's a 7 tenths of a volt drop, so I can just go up minus to plus, right? A meter to base is minus to plus. Go up that 0.7. So 0.7 more than this, that's going to be 3.96 volts. And of course, I'd also like to find VCE, you know, which by definition is VC minus VE. I want to make a load line, right? So I've got my VC is 8.05. The VE is 3.26, right? So VCE is 4.79 volts. Let's draw a load line. So our voltage, draw my line first. Our voltage, right, cutoff voltage is the total supply, that's 12 volts. And then the saturation current is going to be that total 12 volts divided by whatever we have to limit the current, which is 4K plus 3.3K. That works out to 1.64 milliamps. So where are we here? Well, we're at 0.988, nearly 1. So we're over halfway, maybe around here somewhere. And of course, our voltage is, you know, considerably less than half, 4.79. All right. Remember, if you ever plot a point that doesn't lie on the load line, you made a mistake. Either your Q point's wrong or your load line's wrong. It's got to lie on the, on, the, uh, on the load line. Operating point has to be on the load line. Okay. Now, what if we were to use a little approximation? All right. Same kind of deal we did with uh, the two supply emitter bias. We could ignore this R Thevenin over beta. So the approximation just says, look, find your Thevenin voltage. We'll just assume that's what we get here. Now we know that's going to be off a little bit, you know, and we know that because in the real world, the current that comes down through this first resistor is not identical to the current through the lower resistor because there's a little base current. The trick here is to make this current so big that compared to the base current, we can ignore the base current and say, yeah, this current down here is basically the same size as this one, right? In which case, VB is V Thevenin. Right? We just do the voltage divider and we're done. So we just say, okay, that's four volts. And we know there's you know, 0.7 drop. So it's going to be 4 minus 0.7, which gets us 3.3 volts. And that drops across, how convenient is this, right? That drops right across the emitter resistor, Ohm's law, 3.3 volts over 3.3K, which is a milliamp. And if that's a milliamp, then I must have 4 volts across RC, right? So V of RC is going to be 1 mil times 4K. 4 volts. So I've got 4 volts across this. And if that's the case, then VC, you know, just as we did over here, is 12 minus that, which is 8 volts. All right, we can see what's happening here. These variations are... are quite modest, right? We're saying uh, my emitter voltage is 3.3 instead of 3.26. Um, the collector voltage is 8 volts instead of 8.05. Right? The current I'm getting is a milliamp versus 0.988 milliamps, right? So, um, you know, the very last thing here, of course, would be to figure out our VCE. Squeeze that down here. All right, so we would have VC minus VE. So we've got uh, the 8 minus the 4, which is, uh, excuse me, 8 minus the 3.3, uh, which is 0.988.
4.7 volts versus 4.79. So where is this on the load line? Well, the current's a smidge higher. Voltage is a smidge lower, right? Hardly any movement at all. Okay, remember, I'm gonna keep hitting on this. VC is not the same as V of RC. Right? This is a bugaboo for a lot of people. VC is collector to ground. V of RC is the voltage across the collector resistor. Now it's possible in some circuit arrangements that VC and V of RC might be the same number. Um, but watch the nomenclature. When you see that single subscript, it's always from that point to ground. Right? So if it's VC, you put your red lead of your meter on the collector, black lead on ground. As for VB, red lead on the base, black lead on ground. VE, emitter, right? red lead on the emitter, black lead on ground. Right? So in this case, VE in this circuit, VE and V of RE are the same thing. Right? So just remember, single subscript, one thing, other one, ground. All right. So here's a question. If we were to double beta, what happens to the Q point? Do we see a big change in the beta? I mean, do we, excuse me, do we see a big change in the Q if we have a big change in the beta? Think about that. Um, you could maybe do a little calculation on it, but even without picking up your calculator, you should be able to look at this and get a good determination, right? Maybe you could leave a comment to indicate what you think is going to happen. Let's leave it right there.